a doll that aged. So you guys know, normally when you've had a doll for a long time, it starts to deteriorate a little bit. You know, like some hair might fall off, it might get a little dirty, it gets dusty, maybe an eyeball falls out. If you've had something for a very long time, no matter what it is, it's naturally gonna wear out. But this doll didn't wear out like normal dolls do. It actually aged like a human. Its skin actually wrinkled like someone who was in their 80s or 90s. So many people believe this doll to be extremely haunted. Because trust me, I've had dolls that I've kept since 1994 and they're not wrinkly. And I mean, yes, they look old, but they don't have human wrinkles, you know? Okay, so let's get into the story of what exactly happened. Now, the family that this happened to wanted to stay anonymous. They didn't want anyone on the internet to know who they really are. I don't really know why but I respect it. They were said to just be an average couple who had kids. And one Christmas, they gave their daughter a little doll. Now this doll was completely your average normal doll. She had beautiful silky hair, eyes that sparkled, a dress with a lace trim. She was just an average doll that anyone would have loved to have. And the doll was very loved by this young girl. But as with most toys that kids have, they eventually grow out of them. So the doll was eventually forgotten as this little girl grew older. Eventually the children reached their 20s and they moved out of the house. So the parents decided that instead of throwing away their old toys, they would just put them in boxes up in the attic because they still wanted to keep these older memories. And although the doll had been played with for about 10 years, it was still in pretty good condition. The skin looked the same, the hair was still all nicely brushed, it was still very clean, the doll still looked pretty perfect when they put it in this box. Now, now, fast forward about 11 years later, the family were having a clean out of the attic when they stumbled across a rather odd looking doll. The doll was wrinkled and aged, and it looked just like a mini old person pretty much. So they saw this doll and thought, what the heck? We've never owned a doll that looked like this. The arms were stiff and mummified. There was wrinkles running down every single part of this doll. But that's when they recognized the dress the doll was wearing. It was a beautiful dress with lace trim. And they noticed that on the box it said, kids' memories. And that's when they realized, oh my gosh, this was the doll that belonged to the daughter. It once had the face of a baby and it had now aged to something that looked like it was like 80 years old. It had aged much the same way a human does. But they said the most haunting part of the doll was the eyes. Even they looked human and it almost looked like the doll was staring right into their souls. They got this really bad vibe, kind of like an evil presence in the attic. And they knew right away that something wasn't right. So the family decided to get rid of this doll because they had no idea what had happened to it. They gave it to new owners who happily took it from them. And now in today's time, we have no idea where the doll is or what it looks like. We only have the pictures of when they found it. I just think it's so weird because in 11 years, a doll shouldn't look like that. Like I said, I have dolls from 1994, that's 26 years ago, that look the exact same. So here's some theories that people have. Some people think it's totally normal and there's a logical explanation. They say that maybe the plastic on this doll's face just rotted. However, other people say, no, that's impossible. If the plastic was rotting, it would crack. It wouldn't wrinkle. And those people also think that there must be some sort of paranormal attachment to this doll. And when the family kind of just left the doll in the attic, it grew inside the doll and got older. I don't know. Other people say that maybe it's some type of cursed doll that whoever plays with it, the spirit like takes their youth from them and because this doll wasn't being played with, it started to get old. I don't know. The whole thing is just so weird to me, but I thought it was so interesting and really wanted to tell this story on this channel. So definitely comment down below what you think about this doll. And now let's move on to the doll with growing hair. Okiku is a creepy old Japanese doll residing at a temple in Iwamizawa. She allegedly grows human hair and is also said to be haunted by the spirit of a little girl. Now, there are various legends that have to do with Okiku, so we're not too sure which one is the real one, but the most popular one is that this doll was originally
recently bought by a 17 year old boy to give to his little sister in 1918. The doll itself was around 40 centimeters tall and was dressed in a traditional Japanese kimono and the black hair is in a traditional style cut shoulder length. So when this 17 year old boy bought this doll originally, the hair was only up to here. It is said that this little girl loved the doll so much, she played with it every single day, she took it everywhere with her, she slept with it at night. But one day this little girl unfortunately died after she caught the flu. As you guys know, back in 1918, medical care wasn't what it was now and a lot of little kids died when they got an illness. And right after she passed away, things started acting really strange. The jet black black hair of this doll started getting longer and longer every single day. And before long, the hair had grown all the way to the doll's knees. So obviously this family was so freaked out and they thought that maybe the daughter's spirit had entered the doll and that's why the hair was actually growing. And since they believed that their daughter's spirit might have actually been in the doll, they didn't want to just get rid of the doll. So they instead brought it to the Manaji Temple in the town of Iwamizawa in Japan. The family explained the doll Doll's weird qualities to the priest, but he was still willing to take it. So that's actually where it resides to this day. And the doll's hair continues to grow and people have to actually trim it very often. So if you go online and look up pictures of this doll, in each picture it's like the doll's hair length is different. It's so creepy. So this story is very famous throughout Japan. They've made like books and stories and movies about it. And no one has really been able to explain how the hair keeps growing. So people People wonder, is it like an actual supernatural phenomenon or is it a hoax? The story of Robert the Doll dates back to the early 1900s when a young boy named Eugene Robert Otto was given a one-of-a-kind handmade doll by a servant that worked for his parents in his home. So he named the doll after himself and became very quickly attached to it. It was this strange straw-filled doll that was life-size and the boy brought it along with him everywhere he went. But it wasn't very long before people started noticing that Robert had some very evil tendencies. The boy's parents would often hear him in his bedroom having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. They would also wake up in the middle of the night to their son screaming, only to find the frightened boy in bed surrounded by overturned furniture. So these parents would run into this boy's bedroom and his furniture would be all over the room. Chairs upside down, desks thrown across the room, toys all over the ground, and the boy would always blame his doll. He would be like, mom and dad, it was my doll, I swear. And obviously that's really hard for parents to believe. Soon after, all these weird things started happening in the house. And every time the parents would ask their son, their son would say, Robert did it. So Robert did it became like the thing to say. His parents would also often hear the eerie sound of Robert giggling around the house. And whenever people would pass by their house, they claimed to see a small doll moving from window to window. Robert was eventually moved to the attic where he remained for a number of years. So these parents literally couldn't take it anymore and decided to put Robert the doll in the attic. Now the boy eventually grew up and his parents passed away and he became an artist and would spend his days alone in this giant mansion. He would always be painting with his old friend Robert the doll sitting beside him. He eventually got married but his wife hated the doll and legend has it that it actually drove her to insanity and she would frequently try to lock it in the attic. Others say that this man actually even died with Robert the doll right by his side. So he's had it all through his life, even until death. Robert the doll now lives at the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida, where some believe his hair color and his soul are both slowly fading. But everyone that visits this museum is warned that Robert the doll can put curses on people. They say that if you take his picture without asking permission first, he will curse you. To date, the walls near his glass case are covered in numerous letters from previous visitors begging for Robert's forgiveness and asking him to remove any hex he has cast. So people will literally travel back to the museum and apologize for taking his picture without permission or they'll beg him to remove the curse. Some people even say his facial expressions are always changing. So this doll is just said to be one of the most haunted dolls in the entire world and I would love to go see him. <laughs> A man was 
walking past an old farmhouse when he thought he heard some crying coming from within. Now, the odd part about this man hearing crying coming from within this farmhouse was that farmhouse had been abandoned for years. There should be no child in there whatsoever. It was falling apart, it probably had so much mold in it, and yeah, no one had lived there for probably 50 years. He walked up to the old house and knocked on the door, but there was no answer. But the crying continued, so he had to look around. He decided that he had to enter this farmhouse because obviously if there was a kid in danger, he had to go save them. So he walked in the house, it was so dusty, so dirty, but he noticed that the crying was coming from underneath him, so literally under the floorboards. He assumed it must have been coming from the cellar under the house. So he slowly made his way down there using the old creaky stairs. And as soon as he got down there, he saw something so disturbing. On the floor was a body of a young girl and she was holding a doll in her arms. He had no idea when this girl had passed away. He didn't know how long she had been down there. He didn't know if it was an accident, if it was some sort of crime, but it is believed that when she died, her spirit decided to inhabit the doll. So that is such a creepy origin story of this man finding this poor girl holding a doll in her arms. Now at first no one knew the doll was haunted, so it was just passed on to a mother and a daughter who lived in the town. Now I don't know about you guys, but I would not want to own a doll that was in the arms of someone who died. No thank you. But this mother and daughter gladly took the old doll, and almost instantly when the doll was in the mother's house, the woman could hear a crying coming from the cellar. And whenever she went to investigate this crying, nothing would be there. The cellar's windows would be open and the doll would be on the floor. So when this began to happen so frequently, obviously the mother was very afraid and tried to get rid of it. So she decided to donate it to the Quesnel and District Museum in British Columbia. And as soon as she donated this doll to the museum, all the creepy stuff that was happening in her house stopped. Now, when the woman dropped this doll off at the museum in 1991, she decided that she was going to lie about the doll so that she could be sure this museum would take it from her. Now, this museum was not a paranormal museum. This museum just took old historical items. So she didn't want to tell them it was haunted in fear that they would reject her. So she basically just told the museum staff that it was a very old doll. It was 90 years old. And she said it was just too fragile and didn't want her young daughter playing with it in fear that she would break it. So the museum just assumed that it was a cool vintage item from history and gladly accepted it. And obviously they had no idea that there was just so much more to it than that. So let's talk a bit more about this doll's appearance. The staff took the doll and immediately felt uneasy. The doll had an incredibly creepy look to it. Its old clothing was quite old and faded. Its arms and legs were ripped in places. But most creepy of all was the doll's face. It was just so realistically painted and even had these real looking glass eyes. The forehead over the doll's right eye was cracked, causing the eye to protrude slightly. So the doll almost looked like it was really peering at people from the side of its eye because it was cracked. So Mandy the doll had to be taken to the museum's workroom to undergo some maintenance before it was put on display. So they put this doll into a plastic bag and museums do this just to test if the item had any bugs that had infested it. So basically they kept it in a bag overnight and if there were any bugs, the bugs would crawl into the bag and not escape and that way they could see if they had to like eradicate any bugs. And it's kind of gross if you really think about it, but it does make sense. If you're taking in something that's a hundred years old, you want to make sure there's nothing living inside of it. But the staff said they had a very uneasy feeling putting this doll into a plastic bag, mostly because it looked so realistic. Like it looked like they were putting an actual baby into a bag and it freaked them out. And they also said the doll was almost giving them this very angry, unhappy look as they did it. Like this doll was unapproving of going into a bag. And the staff that was working in the same room as this doll said they swore they heard the bag rustling around as if the doll was moving inside of it trying to get out. And it wasn't any bugs moving because by the end of this trial, no bugs had escaped this doll's body. But yeah, all through the night, the doll was like changing positions in the bag. 
Ugh. So the initial analysis of the doll was done with the whole bug thing, and then they had to take it to another room to take pictures of it. There's like a whole process this museum does. Mandy was photographed and then left in the lab overnight. And the next morning when staff re-entered the lab, they found it had been messed up overnight. So small objects had been thrown across the room and large objects like desks and chairs and couches had literally been moved across the room. And the staff said this would happen and any time they left Mandy the doll by herself overnight, the next day things would just be so messed up. So then it came time to put her on display in the museum. When Mandy was finally placed on display within the museum, she was one of the first things visitors would see as they passed the entryway. So she was at like the very front of the museum, the first thing anybody would see. But visitors started to complain that they had this very uneasy feeling as soon as they saw Mandy. People said that when they looked at this doll, there was just something wrong with it, something they couldn't put their finger on. And most of the time, whenever someone would take a picture of Mandy the doll, the picture would not turn out. It would either be a black screen, super blurry, weird orbs around the doll. It would just never turn out properly. Some people had even got pictures with a figure standing beside the doll. And it got to the point where so many people going to the museum were complaining that they had to move Mandy the doll to the back of the museum. Eventually this psychic came to the museum and instantly felt this presence from the doll. So she asked the staff if they could take the doll out of the display case so she can hold the doll in her arms. The staff felt kind of weird about this but decided it would be okay to do. And as soon as the psychic held this doll in her arms, she instantly knew what happened to the little girl. The girl that was found in the basement of the farmhouse and that's how the staff learned about her backstory. And because all of this weird stuff was happening with the doll, they decided to reach out to that mother who originally donated it to see if she would finally fess up to it being haunted. And she did. This mother told them everything about all the creepy stuff that was happening in her house, about how she lied just to get rid of the doll. So now this museum still has this doll in a glass display case that you can still go and see. But just like Robert the doll, they say that you should ask permission before you take her picture. And it's so crazy because this museum is not meant to be a paranormal museum. It was supposed to just be things from history. But now they have this doll there that all the staff are afraid of. And yes, it is in Canada and that's where I am from. It's in British Columbia, so it would be sort of a ways away for me to go there, but I do want to go there one day. There was this old woman who was living in a hundred year old house. As beautiful as the house was, there was some dark energy that was lingering inside of it. And this old woman who lived there really speculated that this dark energy was coming from her doll named Amelia. This doll was made in 1994 and she was about 19 inches tall. And what's incredibly creepy about this whole thing is that when this woman first bought this doll, her eyes were blue. She looked like a completely normal doll at first. Everything was fine for years and years, but one day the doll's eyes turned this bright creepy shade of green. It happened overnight and without explanation. And pretty much right after this doll's eyes turned green, that's when all of the weird things started happening in her house. She claimed to get woken up every night by a crying baby. She'd walk around the house and wouldn't be able to find the source of the sound. She'd also hear slamming doors, she'd hear this creaking down the hallway at night, sounding like someone was walking towards her bedroom. And she had this instinct that all of the activity was happening because something was wrong with her doll. So she didn't know what else to do and decided to call some paranormal investigators to go to her house to see what was wrong. They came over and could immediately sense something evil in the house. So they did these EMF field tests on the doll and the readings were between 1.8 and 2 point one, which is a very high reading to get from an inanimate object. Ghosts are thought to emit EM radiation or disturb the existing magnetic fields in a room. So the higher number you get while you're doing this test, the more likely it is that whatever you're doing it on is haunted or there's paranormal activity involved. And this doll was emitting very, very high energy. So these paranormal investigators decided to remove this doll from this woman's house to give her some peace. And then they decided to put it on eBay for 
someone to buy, which I find a little bit strange. But as you guys know, eBay is like known for their haunted dolls. There's like hundreds of new listings for them every single day and people actually go and buy them. I mean, they're incredibly in high demand. I have done so many videos on my channel on haunted eBay dolls alone. But here's a little sentence of what the actual eBay listing said for this doll. It says, this doll is not recommended for the weak of heart or any little kids to have in their bedroom. She's too creepy. And then it goes on to say about all the creepy paranormal stuff that she does. So someone eventually did buy Amelia the doll on eBay. And when they took it back to their house, they began to hear childish laughter coming from the room that she was kept in. This man who bought her also claimed that sometimes she actually waves at him. And he's also found her randomly standing in the hallway at some times. So I definitely find this story to be fascinating, especially because the eyes turned bright green. That's insane to me. All right, this next story is about Joliet, the haunted doll. I've heard of Juliet, but I've never heard of Joliet. That's kind of cool. A long time ago, there was this woman who received Joliet the doll as a pregnancy gift. But what was not known at the time is that this friend who gave her the present was actually a very jealous person. She was so jealous, in fact, that she put a curse on the doll before she gave it to her friend as a pregnancy gift. Imagine having that much hate in your heart that you give a pregnant woman a cursed doll. It's actually unknown why this friend was so jealous, but to me, that is so messed up. Because since then, this doll has been ruining this family's life. So basically, this woman gives birth to a healthy baby boy, and only a few days later, the boy passes away from some mysterious illness. In fact, the doctors were baffled because they couldn't figure out really why the baby had passed away. It was healthy. And this same tragedy occurred for the next four generations in this family. The women in the family would give birth to a baby boy, and a few days later, he would pass away. Now what's creepy is that this doll would mimic the sound of the baby's cry, and that's why this family could never give the doll away because they felt as if their child had like gone into the doll. And because this was going on for generations and generations, this family says that you can hear four different babies crying from inside this doll because every time one passes away, its spirit goes into it. So you've got to wonder, how long is this curse going to last in their family? Would the curse go away if they got rid of the doll? Or would things get worse? I mean, I could really feel for this family. Some people say, no, it's not a curse. It's just a coincidence that this has been happening in this family. But to that I say, then why is this doll crying all the time? It is said that the doll holds four souls, but that number will inevitably grow as the doll is passed from mother to daughter. So yeah, that is incredibly sad. And all I gotta say is that friend who was jealous, I hope karma came for them. All right, and lastly, we're gonna be talking about a haunted Elsa doll. A Houston area girl was excited to receive an Elsa doll on Christmas of 2013. The talking doll sang the popular song, Let It Go, from the movie Frozen, and also spoke certain sentences from the film. So this was just like a talking, singing Elsa doll. However, this family says that in 2015, so after a couple years they own this doll, the doll started switching between speaking Spanish and English, which the family said was weird because there was no button on the doll to like change the language. It just started happening out of the blue. The family also said that when the doll was turned off or out of batteries, it would still start talking between English and Spanish. So the family was so freaked out, they decided to get rid of this doll. So they threw it out and weeks after, it was found inside of a bench in their living room. So literally they tossed it in the garbage and it came back like a week later. The family says that at this point that it randomly showed up again, it completely stopped speaking English and only spoke in Spanish. So the family tried once again to get rid of this doll. This time they wrapped it up inside two different bags and put it at the bottom of a garbage can. And then the family went on vacation and completely forgot about the doll. They thought it was gone for good. Well, when they came back from their vacation, the daughter found the doll sitting in their backyard. I mean, I'm sorry, but at that point I would be even scarred from watching Frozen. <laughs> Anything that reminded me of that creepy doll, I'd be like, no, it's out to get me. So they wanted to try one last time to finally get rid of this doll. So instead of just throwing it in the garbage, they actually mailed it to 
one of their friends who lived in Minnesota. Their friend said they would get the package and try and get rid of it themselves. So basically they were sending this doll across the states. <laughs> they also didn't even put a return address on this package to ensure it wouldn't come back to them. So this friend eventually received the doll and they said their plan was to go out to the middle of a lake, attach a steel pipe to the doll so it would sink in the water and never be seen again. Now this is the last I heard of the doll since it was on the news like I think a year ago. So I hope this family is still not being haunted by Elsa. That sounds so weird to say. But the family said that if it does come back to them, they're gonna have to look into some supernatural resolutions. Meaning maybe paranormal investigators, like exercising the doll, maybe getting a priest, I don't really know. But like I said, I would be traumatized by the whole Frozen series if that happened to me. In 1968, a peculiar doll was discovered in the attic of an old Victorian home in upstate New York. It was found at the very bottom of this old trunk full of newspaper. The only other item that was in the trunk along with the doll was this yellowed piece of paper containing the Lord's Prayer. The old newspapers had dates on them going back to the early 1930s, but the actual age of the doll could not be determined. The doll was added to a collection of other antique dolls the family owned and was given the name Charlie. Now, at first the family didn't really pay any close attention to the doll. It just sort of blended into their pre-existing collection of dolls they already had. And this family was actually quite large. It was the mother and the father and they had five children. It wasn't until Charlie started to move from place to place on the bench full of dolls that the family actually started to take notice. Now, the parents were very quick to blame their children for moving him around. They thought that maybe their kids were playing a prank on them, but the children told their parents that they were not touching the doll and that it was moving on its own. Now, the youngest daughter, who was only four years old at the time, made a very startling statement. She said that Charlie had spoken to her when she got up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. And so the parents sort of just blamed the child's imagination, said she must have been making it up. Basically, these parents could just not believe that this doll had anything creepy associated with it. The parents would never actually witness Charlie doing anything, but the children would always see it happen and they became terrified of it. All five children refused to get up during the night to use the bathroom, and none of them would venture within five feet of the bench the doll resided on. Now, the final straw was when one day the parents saw that the youngest daughter was covered in scratches all over her body. The parents thought that maybe it was the cat at first, but the little girl said, no it was Charlie. Now, the truth apparently was never fully discovered because it was kind of like the word of the children over the word of the adults who never really knew who to believe. But the parents, eager to end the chaos, took the doll back into the attic and locked him in the trunk that he was found in. And then things in their house soon returned to normal and no one thought of the doll after that. Years later, once the children were grown, the house was sold and the trunk was removed from the attic to be sold at a garage sale. And the doll remained one of the last things to go in this garage sale. Nobody wanted it. Finally, this woman bought the doll to add to her old antique collection. And before this woman took the doll home, the family made sure to tell her all of the things that happened to them, which I think is very commendable. Some people just want to get rid of something and don't tell the person what happened. But this family wanted to make sure she knew before she got it. Now, since that day, this doll has been passed from family to family. It doesn't really seem to stay in one place for a long period of time. I wonder why. He has been rumored to still move from time to time, but his ghostly power seems to mainly be unlocked by children. So if this doll is in a house where there's no children, it's not going to do anything. But if it's around any kind of child or young person, that is when the energy seems to be the most active. Charlie the Haunted Doll now resides at a shop called Local Artisan. There he sits among taxidermy animals, unusual art, and other oddities where he can be viewed by the public. So now he's in a place where anybody can can go and visit him. I feel like I want to kind of go see him. All right, guys, so the next doll is called Letta. Letta the doll, also known as Letta Me Out, is truly one of the scariest looking haunted dolls out there. Now, this child-sized figurine is said to be over 200 years old. It's made out of carved wood and real human hair. It always freaks me out when they make dolls with like real human anything. Like, we don't need that. Now, the doll's owner, his name is Carrie Walton, claims to 
to have found Letta in the 1970s while exploring a deserted home in Wagga Wagga, Australia. And then Walton brought the doll back to his home in Queensland. Soon thereafter, strange events began to occur. Household items shifted positions, scuff marks appeared on the floor, Walton's children complained of nightmares, and one night all of his kids woke up, ran to him, and told him that they saw Letta walking around the house on its own. Dogs would turn aggressive whenever they were around the doll. Guests in their home would claim to see the doll move. What I find so interesting is that it's almost like never the actual doll owner that sees this stuff. It's always the kids or the guests or like other people. So because of all of the madness in his house, one day he tried to sell Letta to somebody else who would take him. Except when he was about to go drive the doll to the new owner, he said he physically couldn't get the doll out of the car. I don't really know what that means because it doesn't explain it. Obviously it's some sort of supernatural thing where Letta did not want to be sold to anybody else. Now apparently Walton traced Letta's origins back to Eastern Europe and he believes the doll is a vessel haunted by the spirit of a boy who drowned many years ago. Now Letta actually currently tours around Australia and it sits in the laps of people who are brave enough to be like within that close range of him. Some people also take pictures with its grinning face. I don't know, the whole thing is really creepy. To be honest, this is probably one of the most creepiest dolls I've seen like physically. Like he looks the scariest. I don't know if it's a he or she, but it's scary. And lastly, we have the doll called Harold. For some reason, I find this name just pretty, pretty funny. Harold the doll has the reputation for being the first of many haunted dolls to be sold on eBay in 2003. And his eBay post actually gained a lot of public attention. So much so that this doll actually appeared on the show Ghost Adventures. The initial story behind the badly worn doll is that he belonged to the young son of a Florida man who passed away in the 1940s. Now, when the son died, the couple reported hearing crying and singing coming from the boy's bedroom. Now, a priest came to their house and advised them that they should burn the doll, like totally destroy it. But when he tried to burn the doll, apparently it literally would not burn and remained intact. So the man kept it in his shed for about 60 years. Then the doll was put on eBay and it was sold for $300. And since then, it seems that Harold is passed from house to house. No one can keep him for a long period of time. He just seemed to cause misfortune anywhere that he went. Some people even saw his facial expression shift into a smile a lot of the time, which is super creepy. And according to the Ghost Adventures episode, a friend of one of the owners developed a brain tumor shortly after visiting Harold. Definitely could be a coincidence, but still very creepy. This story takes place back in the early 1900s. It's important to note that this was back when there were not a lot of medical advances. So the child mortality rates were a lot higher than they are now. Healthcare was just not very good back then. Back in those days, there were two very common traditions that happened whenever a child passed away. The first very strange tradition is that they would often take a photograph of the child after they have passed before they were buried. They made sure that in that photograph they were dressed in their really nice burial clothes. It was a really common thing back then. I can't even show you photos of that because honestly they're really disturbing and I probably am not even allowed to on YouTube. And the second common thing was to bury the child with their most cherished possession, typically their favorite doll, blanket, or other toy. So this was the case with a little girl named Beth Parson. She was said to be this angelic little girl. She was so sweet and she passed away at the young age of four years old and it devastated the farming community that she lived in. The exact cause of Beth's demise has not been recorded but the most common account was that she succumbed to diphtheria in 1907. Now diphtheria was this really dangerous bacterial infection that usually affects the mucous membranes of your nose and in your throat and this was a really common thing for children to pass away from back then. So let's talk Talk about the doll that is obviously a huge part of this story. So per tradition, Beth was photographed post-mortem before she was buried, and before her tiny coffin was sealed, her mother put her favorite doll inside, gently placing it in her daughter's stiff, cold hands. Now one thing that most people found very peculiar about this doll is how closely it resembled her, down to her hair color.
color, her eye color. The doll was wearing this tiny yellow canary dress. This doll had been purchased from a door-to-door -door salesman as a gift for Beth's third birthday. She seldom let it out of her sight. She was always playing with it. She would spend hours on the porch swing talking to it. And she would clutch it very tightly at night before she went to sleep. And apparently she looked the same way while she was being buried. According to local legend, just two weeks after Beth Parson's funeral, the doll was found in a sitting position on the porch swing of the Parson house. Now the girl's father was the one to find the doll just sitting there, and he thought that maybe his wife had placed the wrong doll into Beth's coffin. So without wanting to upset his wife or cause any huge fuss, he went to her gravesite, dug up her grave, opened the coffin, and put the doll inside. He was actually surprised to see that there was no doll that had been buried with his daughter. And it was crazy because he was almost so sure that it was. The man told himself that he must have only thought his wife put the doll in there and in her grief she had forgotten to do it. But just a little bit over a week after the reburial, the doll appeared once again, this time caked with dirt. Its bright yellow dress was stained muddy brown and she was sitting on a chair in Beth's old bedroom. Needless to say, the husband was not able to hide this from his wife anymore and he was convinced that his own grief was playing mind tricks on him. Perhaps he only thought he put the doll in the coffin and maybe instead he placed it outside somewhere, maybe near her grave. He was constantly second guessing himself because he knew this was impossible. So he told his wife and she thought that maybe something more sinister was happening with this doll. So she called a priest and had him come over to bless the doll before they put it back inside their daughter's coffin. The minister was present at the reburial this time and his own journal corroborates the story. As you guys can imagine, the doll appeared once again. The couple found it at dawn the following morning, sitting upright on Beth's bed, which is where her mother had kept it when she was alive. But there was something slightly different this time. Sitting beside the doll was a small paper note. When they went to look at it, they saw that there was a seven word question, barely legible in a childish scrawl. And it said, Why won't you let me come home? Shortly after this happened, the Parsons family donated the doll because they just could not continue burying it, continue seeing it. They were extremely spooked and upset. But even after this doll was donated to a new family, the doll would still seemingly abandon its subsequent owners and appear in various locations around the Parsons house. They literally could not escape this doll ever. So let's talk about the newest owners after the Parsons passed away. When Mrs. Parsons died, she left no other children and the doll was perfect purchased at an estate sale. The house was torn down shortly after and the doll is said to have passed from one antique collector to another. And each collector who has owned this doll says that it likes to wander around constantly, which is really creepy. Now, one of these owners, her name was Clarita Bennett. She actually collected haunted objects. And so she purchased this doll in the late 1980s. And because the doll was so worn and dirty, she had to touch it up as best as she could. She replaced its rotting hair. She replaced its moldy clothing. She wanted to make the doll look as good as new. Now, during the doll's brief stay at Bennett's in-home museum, she set up a hidden camera in an attempt to document its occasionally strange behavior. And she usually did this with the other haunted objects that she had in her museum. She would set up night cameras to see if they would move around or show any activity. And she said that this doll would move all of the time and she actually has video evidence of it. I'm not sure how real this is, if someone made it up. I don't even know how true this story is in general, but I'm gonna briefly show you the real footage of this doll moving its arm. It's actually really creepy, here you go. All right, so apparently Clarita Bennett passed away in 1992. And since then, this footage has been constantly shared and showed on paranormal websites. A lot of people know about it. <laughs> 
Victorian era, there was another use for dolls. Because of the fact that medicine was way less advanced, more people got sick and more people died younger in life, especially children who don't have a very great immune system. So when a very rich family lost a child, it was customary for them to have what's called a mourning doll. This doll would have to look exactly like the child they had lost. They would often be made of wax and sometimes the hair would be taken straight from the child and put onto the doll to add an extra level of authenticity. Once these dolls were made, they would usually be placed in a crib inside of the house and every single day they had to be cared for, their clothes had to be changed, they had to have food placed in front of them as if they could actually eat it. They had to be treated like a real life child. And this supposedly helped the family cope with their loss. These dollhouses were built by grieving parents for their beloved daughters filled with different toys that they like. The whole thing is just so tragic and what's sad is that these were built such a long time ago and over the years they've been vandalized and destroyed, but some are still around to this day and those are the ones that we're going to be talking about. The first dollhouse grave is of Dorothy Marie Harvey and she lived from 1926 to 1931. She died at the age of five and she was buried with a dollhouse over her grave, which was a common thing for people to do in the late 1800s and early 1900s. According to the story that is most often told about her, Dorothy was apparently on her way up north with her parents, passing through rural West Tennessee, when she came down with the measles and unfortunately passed away really quickly. Local townspeople felt badly for the family and paid for a dollhouse to cover Dorothy's grave. And when the family passed away, the cemetery has still maintained her gravesite, which I I think is awesome. Toys and flowers are left by her graveside to this very day, and legend has it that you can sometimes see Dorothy when you look in the windows of the dollhouse. The next dollhouse grave is of Vivian May Allison, and she lived from 1894 to 1899. She lived in Indiana and died at the age of six, which broke the hearts of her parents. At the time, her father had actually been building a dollhouse for her as a Christmas present, but his daughter passed away before receiving it. So instead, in his grief, he decided to to place it over her grave, adding toys and trinkets his daughter loved in life. And for nearly 70 years, her parents would come and maintain her grave and made sure it still looked great. And after all of her family members passed away and no one was able to look after her grave, it fell into disrepair. It was vandalized and literally ripped away from the gravesite. Like honestly, like it makes me so mad that people have no respect for stuff like that. But several volunteers in the area decided to create a new one for her and fix it up so now it's back in place. The next dollhouse grave is of Lava Klein and she lived from 1902 to 1908. Now she was actually born with this mysterious crippling illness in 1902 and her sole pleasure in her brief life was to gaze into dollhouses with large windows, most of them built by her father and filled with dolls by her mother. So during her very short life she absolutely loved dollhouses. When Lava died in 1908 at the age of six, her father had the dollhouse moved to her grave so that she can always see it even in death. Now both of her parents died in the mid 1940s and were for some reason buried in a different cemetery from where Lava was buried and Lava's father had asked that her dollhouse be destroyed after her mother's death, which I just find really really odd. But the community actually didn't want to destroy this dollhouse, they thought it was too sweet and too precious, so they actually dug up Lava's body and took her and the dollhouse to to her parents' grave so that they could all be together and the dollhouse wouldn't have to be destroyed. I think that was such an awesome idea. The locals also kept repairing and refurnishing the dollhouse whenever it was broken into by ghoulish people. Now this grave area is said to be haunted by her spirit and actually a glow has been seen within the dollhouse windows after dark and there's no lights like in the dollhouse or around the grave. Orbs have also been spotted nearby and the tiny furniture within the dollhouse is said to move around 
around all the time. And it's unclear if Love is Spirit is just really happy that she was moved beside her parents or if she was unhappy that she was moved. The next dollhouse grave is of Nadine Earls and she lived from 1929 to 1933 so she was really really young. She wasn't even five years old yet when she passed away. It was December and all she wanted for Christmas was a dollhouse. I wish her father was busy working to fulfill for her. So this is the second child who passed away while their father was building them a dollhouse. It's so sad. At the Oakwood Cemetery in Lynette, Alabama, that dollhouse which is now made of brick to ensure its longevity stands among the gravestones. The small brick bungalow has all the makings of a real house with a front porch, striped awnings, a mailbox, flower boxes in the summer, and an evergreen wreath and Christmas lights in the winter. After this dollhouse grave was installed, her parents filled it with a bunch of toys, a baby buggy, all kinds of little dolls, and they always kept it super, super tidy for Nadine. And what appears to be that bed in the middle of the dollhouse is actually her grave. And this is what it says on her grave. It says, our darling little girl, sweetest in the world, little Nadine Earls, me want it now, which I guess is something that she used to say a lot. Years after her death, her family kind of kept her gravesite clean and tidy and would add toys, but eventually her family passed away and they were actually buried in the same cemetery as her, which is great. And now the city has actually upkept the dollhouse. And lastly, we have the Keating children. One of the oldest dollhouse markers indicates the grave of not only one, but three babies from the same family who all coincidentally died on the second day of the month. Built in New St. Joseph Cemetery in Cincinnati, Ohio by John Keating. This two-story dollhouse was built in remembrance of his daughter Mary Julia, his son Eddie, and niece Mary Agnes Keating. Now this dollhouse is very intricately carved. It has roof shingles and decorative stones all over it. Like if you go up close to it, you can see all the detail that was really put into it. But unfortunately, nowadays the dollhouse sort of fell into disrepair because no one was looking after it anymore. But at one point in time, carved furniture was actually inside of this dollhouse, like carved tiny little furniture pieces. Now on this dollhouse, it says to our little darlings and it bears the children's names on the description. It says one by one, our leaves are falling, fading day by day. And in silence, heaven is calling one by one, our lambs away. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> The My Buddy doll line was a toy brand made by Hasbro in 1985 with the intention of making a doll to appeal to little boys and teach them about caring for their friends. Now this idea was both innovative and controversial at the time because back then toy dolls were associated with girls which looking back that's ridiculous. It's just a toy. Anybody could like it no matter what gender they are. But back then this new like toy for boys was such a huge thing. It's crazy. And you're probably like, Jesse, why? Why is this doll so creepy? There was a rumor saying that the My Buddy doll was the inspiration for Chucky, who was obviously that evil doll from Child's Play. But we'll get into that in just a second because that's a whole other can of worms. You guys aren't ready. So I'm first gonna let you know the official My Buddy song. They actually had a song for this doll and here are the lyrics. My buddy, my buddy, wherever I go, he goes. My buddy, my buddy, I'll teach him everything that I know. My buddy and me like to climb up a tree. My buddy and me were the best friends that could be my buddy my buddy my buddy and me and everyone knew that song everyone sang that song it was just the song that went with this doll now around the time that this doll came out for boys they also came out with a toy named my pet monster the original intent behind my pet monster was to capitalize on the young male demographic by offering a plush toy that hopefully boys would want to play with he had blue fur horns a fanged smile and orange plastic hand Handcuffs. Now the handcuffs were the weirdest thing about this toy that people often talked about because the whole intent was so the boy could handcuff himself to his toy and they would be like stuck together wherever they went. Super weird concept. Anyways, the My Buddy doll and the My Pet Monster thing were the two popular toys for boys at the time. Anyway, the My Buddy doll was 21 inches tall and it had the look of being around the age of a toddler. It had a red hat, 
brown hair. He was dressed in a long sleeve shirt that had multicolor stripes of red, yellow, blue, and white. He also had his trademark overalls that had my buddy on it. The logo was right on the front and the whole doll was stuffed with fabric. And the people who made it says that that was so the toy could be played with roughly, it could be taken up trees, it could be dragged through the mud. It was not meant to sit on a shelf, it was meant to be played with every single day. Now let's talk about how this doll became associated with Chucky. The first Child's Play movie came out in 1988 and was written and directed by Tom Holland. The movie is quite simply the story of a mother who gives her son a doll that ends up being possessed by the soul of a serial killer. Now the movie was a pretty big hit opening at number one and would end up grossing more than 44 million. Child's Play was so popular that it ended up spawning a bunch of sequels. And then they also came out with that new movie in 2019. Now the creepiest thing about all of this is that the Chucky doll was designed to look oddly similar to the My Buddy doll. This was freaking out a lot of kids because a few years earlier, the My Buddy was like the best selling doll for boys. So, so many people had them lying around their house. I mean, kids were getting this for Christmas gifts, for birthday gifts. They were just generally going to the store begging their parents to buy it for them. So by the time the Chucky movie came out, millions of people and kids around the world had this doll just lying in their house. Now at first, the writer for Chucky said that their only main inspiration for Chucky was the Cabbage Patch Kids dolls. But then a few years later, Tom Holland would later affirm that my buddy served as an inspiration for Chucky. So at first, the writers and the producers and directors were saying, no, 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 no. We did not use my buddy as inspiration. I don't know if they were trying to just avoid it by lying, but then a few years later, they did admit to it. Now this caused a lot of angry parents because their kids were terrified of their my buddy dolls. They thought that they were just gonna come alive at any moment and attack their whole entire family. Kids were throwing out these dolls left, right, and center. They were selling them. These dolls were all over like garage sales. And I kind of feel bad because the makers of Chucky really took advantage of the fact that these dolls were really popular at the time. But I mean, if you really think about it, it's kind of genius. They made a killer doll to look like a doll that was the most popular like in the world at the time for boys. And it just made the Chucky movie too realistic for people. A Time Out doll or Corner doll is a large, realistic child doll that is posed with its hands over its face. It's intended to be stood in a corner or up against a piece of furniture, so it appears that the doll is a child who is being punished or having a time out. Now what I feel is even creepier is that the doll's original designer is completely unknown. No one knows who it was or where these came from originally. Though the commonly held belief is that they were created in Appalachia in the 19th 1990s as home decorations. These dolls used to be very popular in flea markets and in old vintage stores. And for some reason, they're very popular at car shows, which is like baffling to me. You're probably wondering, why the heck are they at car shows, Jesse? Some people say they're just decoration because they're definitely eye-catching. And some say the dolls can also be used to hide flaws, such as bumper dents and paint scratches. Now, they usually have a disturbing sign attached to them, Sometimes it says stuff like, my parents don't want me, take me home for $25. People often mistake them for being a real child until they actually walk up and like turn them around. It is crazy how many people have like reported a child hiding in a corner somewhere and then the police show up and they're like, oh no, that's, that's a doll. Some of these dolls don't even have a face because they're supposed to be viewed from the back. So the face of the doll was never designed because you're not supposed to see it, but that's creepy. Could you imagine walking up to what you thought was a real person and when you turn them around, it's just a big blank face? I mean, that's literally something out of a nightmare. Some parents would even put this doll in the corner of their house so that their kid would know where to go when they were in timeout. The kid would just have to stand and face the wall just like the doll was doing. If my mom told me to go stand beside a doll in the corner while I was having my time out, I would have lost my mind. Some people on the internet were saying that they remember their grandparents having this doll when they were little and they always thought it was supposed to be a doll counting for hide and seek. And that kind of makes sense because the dolls sort of have their hands over their face, they're leaned over looking like they're counting. So I can see how it could seem like a hide and seek doll. This one girl says she distinctly remembered sleeping over one night at her grandma's house and she was woken up by the distant 
sound of counting. She heard this tiny little voice somewhere in the house and it counted all the way up to 30 and then said, ready or not, here I come. Then she started to hear the floorboards in her house creak as if something was getting closer. So she ran over to her bedroom door, closed it. And then when she told her grandma the next day, obviously her grandma did not believe her. She thought it was all in her imagination. But could you just imagine? There was another lady who found one of these dolls when she was out walking her dog. She saw this garbage bag sitting on the sidewalk. When she went to open it up, she saw this doll. It was all tattered and dirty and she took it home and still has it to this day. Why would someone do that? But the scariest story I read was about this girl who was dog sitting in this giant old mansion. The house apparently belonged to this old couple who had gone on vacation to Hawaii for two months. She said the first few days she was there, she kept finding these timeout dolls in almost every room of the house in different places. For example, one was in front of the shower curtain, one was in the closet, one was half under the bed, one was in front of the oven. It was just so random. They were placed just like sporadically around the house. They had like hundreds of them. And she said as creepy as it was, she assumed she would just sort of get used to it over time. She knew they were just dolls right? Well, one night she got up out of bed to go and use the washroom and the large bedroom she was in was so dark and the light switch was all the way across the room. So she had no light whatsoever. So she got out of bed and immediately stumbled over something. She was squinting her eyes, wondering what it was. And she saw this dark figure on the ground. She got really spooked and started going faster towards the light switch, but she tripped over something else that was on the floor. So she kept walking faster and faster and tripped over something else. She was so confused because when she went to bed, the room was tidy, spotless, organized. There should have been nothing in her way on the way to the bathroom. But it was like she had to go around all these objects to get to the light. Well, when she finally got there and turned it on, she saw that her room was full of those terrifying timeout dolls. They were everywhere. They were all just grouped in her room, standing at different places, and they were all turned away from her. So she just saw the backs of them leaned over with their hands covering their face. So she ran out of the house and told the couple that they had to find someone else to watch their dogs. And since that day, she literally did not take any dog babysitting jobs because she was just scarred, and I do not blame her whatsoever. <laughs>